In today's Twin Motion tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating spectacular animated sections. Now, the really nice thing about this technique is it works both on the Mac version and the Windows version. For those of you who feel a bit annoyed that you can't use the orthogonal views on the Mac version, check this one out, you'll love it. Thanks for watching. Everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another twin motion tutorial but this time I'm doing it actually on my Mac um, because the yesterday's one that I released was on the PC and I really want to show you my Mac users how you can still create some really nice plans, sections and sort of perspective elevations but really ones that look almost orthogonal. Okay it's not quite the same because unfortunately uh, twin motion on the Mac doesn't support path tracing yet so we have a bit of a workaround that we need to look at. So what we'll do, let's just jump into this video and show you how this works. Okay, so you can see I've just set up a couple of the views here uh, previously when I was just practicing this technique. And I'm gonna show you how to achieve these views and you can even do uh, little animations as well. But let's show you how to do achieve this first of all. So you're gonna to wanna to go into one of the set views potentially. And before you start, just make sure you go into the more and turn off any perspective correction in the cameras because it won't work with parallelism. Okay, they look great in perspective, but this won't work for this particular technique. So what we're gonna do is just go up above the model, okay, and what you want to do is click onto this align to camera or camera align icon, and then find a flat surface pretty much that faces what you're uh, looking to create in terms of the view. Now you can see I'm looking pretty much top down at exactly that spot. Okay, and you can use this technique in a minute for elevations as well. Now the next thing you're going to want to do to try and make this almost like an orthogonal view, not quite, is get the field of view really low. And then of course, zoom out. So with a really low field of view, okay, if we just zoom out a bit, let's go a bit faster. So I'm just going to click three while I'm zooming out. You almost get a plan view. Okay, so it's looking interesting. Now the next technique here is to create a section basically through the model. As I say, unfortunately on the Mac you can't use the orthogonal views. Well you can, but they just don't render nicely. So now what we're going to do is basically, let's get our vignetting down a little bit as well. Let's drop that down. So now what we're gonna do is just pop back into the view and save that view so that we've got that recorded. Brilliant, okay. So the next step is the tools menu from the main menu here to tools, you'll notice that you've got sections and these are really useful for lots of different things and you may never have used these and they work both on Mac and Windows. So basically I'm going to click onto the section and all I need to do is drag one of those into the drawing. Okay now I've noticed I think um, at the moment there might be a limit to four sections because I've actually got four of them in here already. Uh, it's not adding a new one but that's fine I can use this existing one. So when you add it what you'll suddenly get is a cube which basically allows you to create the section itself. Okay, so all I'll do, I'll spin around the view, and it can be quite sensitive to do, is click onto my plan section cube. And you'll notice, here we go, um, we've got the box here, and basically there's a couple of things that you can do. You can enable it, or disable it, and you can see clearly where the section view is being cut. Uh, if you do want to, you can actually change the things like the section color as well, which is quite nice. Um, I quite like to keep it black personally. Let's keep it black for now. And you can also change the uh, sort of thickness of that section cut as well. So when you're looking down in plan, that looks quite nice. You sort of see that cut there. Um, invert obviously does the opposite, which is cool. If you want to look up, for example, and look at things like suspended ceilings. And then we've also got um, a clipping mask here with a few different objects, uh, options in there. Okay, but the main thing you're gonna to want to do is basically adjust the position of that section simply by moving it physically down through the model to the height you would like to take your horizontal section. So it looks really, really good. Then the other thing that you might want to do is actually basically scale it. So to do that then we just pop open this new little icon here. Now we've got the move. Obviously we can you know move that section around as required, which is cool. We can even rotate it if we wanted to. Not that I want to, but just to show you how you can do that. It's interesting. Okay, let's undo that. Um, but this one here, the scaling, 
And this allows you to sort of scale the section in all directions, um, which is really, really cool. So you can do some really interesting things with this. Get that back one and bring that forward. Can you see? You can sort of create almost like uh, some sort of three quarter section. Now, it can be a little bit um, difficult to see. Um, so you can click H to hide and H to show it again if you want to. I'm going to show that because it shows a bit of roof construction as well, um, as well as the section clip cube. So what I'll do, I'm just going to click five and just sort of adjust the position of that ever so slightly. So it's just kind of running through the ridge. I really like the look of that view. And I'm going to go back once again and when I'm ready, I'll create an image of that view. Now, if you do want to, um, you can render this with the site and so on on. But basically, it's pretty straightforward on this uh, example model. If you've organized your project nicely, what you can actually do is just basically drag these icons down, turn everything else off, and let's just select something else so we can escape. So here we go. We've got a really nice little kind of view here. Um, looks like I've still got the background in at the moment, but uh, we can easily turn that off. But basically, yeah, look at that. We've got um, a really nice section. Now, it isn't quite orthogonal. But you know what? It pretty much looks like it is. It's actually a perspective section, um, but it does look really, really cool. So then we kind of basically just move on to the same techniques. Let's update that. I like the look of that. Things like the lighting. And what's really nice about this is obviously you can just adjust things like the ambient brightness again and things like the exposure levels just to kind of bring out the brightness a little bit. This is actually rendering with the sky dome on. Um, you can sort of see the difference with the sky dome on or off. And then you from there, you will actually see that you get basically much better lighting when you adjust the camera times. So when you adjust the camera times now, because the sky dome is off, you basically get that light coming into the project there. It's really, really nice. So that looks really cool. Um, I'd like to harden these shadows up a bit as well. So let's just do that. Basically, we just go into the render settings and we can adjust those camera angles down to get sort of nice hard shadows. Let's try typing in 100. That looks pretty good. Or 150. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so we've tuned that image up. Let's just click uh, refresh and rewind. This initial view uh, looks really, really great. And what's nice is obviously you can kind of spin it around to any orthogonal sort of uh, view type of thing. It's actually a perspective, but because the camera field of view is so small, it kind of looks orthogonal. Now what we're going to do now is have a look at how you can animate these sections as well, which is a really, really cool thing to do. Um, so to do this, all we're going to do is drop in a translator into our project. So we'll just drag a translator into the project. And you'll notice I'm going to switch across from my plan section to one of my short sections here. And basically I'm going to drag that down into this translator. Okay, so as soon as it's dragged into the translator, it will essentially start to move up or down uh, depending on what the translator's asking it to do. Okay, so once you've got the hang of this, you can click onto the short section cube. We've discussed all these options down here. Let's talk about the translator for a second. Obviously, you've got it on or off. If it's off, then basically it will just go back to where it wanted, um, where it was originally set, and stop. If we put it on, it will start moving from the position that it goes to, and it will move a certain distance. So what you can actually do is adjust this distance. Uh, I want to adjust it so it just goes above the model. Okay, so it just goes above the project itself, and when it cuts through, it'll probably go through about five meters. So let's type in five. There we go, so just above the roof and it starts to section down through the roof. And if I wanted to, I could go a bit lower, but that's a perfectly nice height, the normal height for a section. Okay, there's a couple of options. Um, if you just do it once, clearly it will do it once and then stop. I quite like using the ping pong. And notice it goes down and then back up again. It ping pongs, as it were. And then finally, we've got the loop. And basically, that will just go in one direction, get to the end, and then repeat. So it'll kind of go back to its original position and then just sort of start it off again. So that's actually quite a nice view as well. Let's go for the ping pong on this particular option. Over here, you've got the speed as well. So if you do want to, you can sort of speed it up. Let's go a bit faster, quite quick. <laughs> Let's go for one, one second. And then we also have a trigger. Okay, now the trigger is really interesting. What you can do with the trigger is you can basically change the trigger zone but I'm going to go for a really big trigger zone, bearing in mind my field of view is small. And as soon as I kind of get near the project, basically that section starts to activate itself because I'm within the trigger zone. Okay, so you have to have that quite large if you're trying to use this technique. Now let's just take that back down again. 
And let's just go back to our original view. Okay, great. So we've got our translator in the project and let's just create another image for this. Okay, so you can see we've got our next image set up with our section live sectioning and I want to show you how you can animate this, which is very exciting. So, so really easy to do. All we need to go do is back to our media and go to video, create video to create our first keyframe. Now what you're going to want to do here is select the model itself um, so that when you spin around, okay, and the idea here is don't go too far, you can basically just create an additional keyframe, maybe spin around a bit more, let's go up a bit more as well, click another keyframe here, and hopefully if we just click rewind now, you can see we're animating the model itself, which is really, really cool. Okay, so now we just need to turn the translator back on. Okay, so let's just click onto our translator and see that working as well while it's going. And let's go back and review our video while the translator is working. So click play. Here we go, we're spinning around our model. Went slightly off the edge there, but that's okay. We can kind of refine these things and we can animate while doing really, really cool sections as well. So what a fantastic technique. Um, I really like the idea of sections on both Mac and PC. And by taking the field of view really, really low, they're almost as good as sort of, should we say, the plan orthogonal views that we're getting on the new features of 2022. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're new around here, please make a subscription and a like for this video. It really helps the channel grow. So as usual, what we'll do, we'll just play out with some of the produce and the videos and the images that I made during the course of this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.